A man named Paul Atreides is encouraged by his mom to drink the water of life to become a super being. She also helps him speak to a devotee at a temple to get the water of life ready for her son. After a while, Paul then visits the temple, but as he drinks the water, he becomes unconscious. A few months earlier, Paul gets a vision where he speaks to his unborn sister and tells her that their father has been killed. Just as he wakes up, a girl named Chani tells him to stay silent because the Harkonnen soldiers are nearby. Paul then follows Chani with his mother, Jessica, to find a place to hide. As the Harkonnen soldiers come closer, they are attacked by Freeman fighters who come out of nowhere. After finishing off the Harkonnen soldiers, the leader of the Freeman troops, Stilgar, leads everyone back to Freeman territory. As his people see Paul and Jessica, they don't look happy as they believe that the mother and son are spies. However, Stilgar convinces them to let Paul and Jessica inside their territory. Elsewhere, the leader of the Harkonnen security forces, Raban, gets angry when he's told that his men have been crushed by the Freemans. As one of his commanders informs him that taking over that part of the world will be difficult, Raban smashes his head against a table and mentions that he doesn't care how hard it might be. Meanwhile, Stilgar faces a council to make a case for Paul and Jessica's stay in the land. The council members don't think it's right, but Stilgar says he has seen some signs to show that Paul is the Leeson al Ghaib, a messiah who will lead the Freemans to a better future. The council members laugh at this, and they still stand by their decision, because Paul also killed one of their soldiers named Jameis. Stilgar then says Paul killed Jameis in a fair fight, and that his people need to let the Lisa and al Ghaib start learning their ways. Following this, the council members mention that they'll let the desert decide his fate. Elsewhere, Paul complains to Jessica that he needs more people to believe he's the Leeson al Ghaib, because that's the only way he'll get to the Emperor and kill him. Jessica sounds surprised by this, and she tells him that his father was never drawn to revenge. However, Paul doesn't care, as he just wants to kill the Emperor to avenge his father's death. Shortly after, Stilgar calls Jessica to speak to her privately. When they're alone, he tells her that the Reverend Mother of the Freemans is about to die, and he wants Jessica to replace her. He says that since the mother of the Lisan al Ghaib is supposed to be a Reverend Mother, it will be a great opportunity. Jessica doesn't seem interested in this, but Stilgar says she has to do it if she doesn't want her and her son to be abandoned. Following this, Jessica agrees and meets with the dying Reverend Mother. As part of the process of becoming the new Reverend Mother, Jessica is asked to drink from the Water of Life, which is a lethal poison. She hesitates because she doesn't want to die, but as she is then forced, she drinks it. This immediately triggers a strange reaction in Jessica, who then battles for her life. While this is happening, the old Reverend Mother mentions that they might have made a mistake because she just discovered that Jessica is pregnant. A while later, Jessica survives the poison, and while Paul is with her, Stilgar looks happy as he tells his people that the fact she survived has confirmed that her son is the Leeson al Ghaib. Chani doesn't think there's any miracle involved because she doesn't believe in the prophecy, but Stilgar says there's no other way to explain it. As they argue, Paul then says that what happened wasn't a miracle. He adds that his mom is part of a group called Bene Gesserit, who are skilled in poison transmutation. He then tells Stilgar and the others that he's not a messiah, and that all he wants is to learn their ways. Stilgar thinks he's just being humble, and he tells his people it's another sign that Paul is the chosen one. Shortly after, Jessica wakes up and Paul asks how she's doing. She says she's better, but that her unborn daughter, Aaliyah, is frightened. Jessica mentions that she and Aaliyah now speak a lot, and that Paul's sister believes in him as the Messiah. Just then, Jessica tells Paul that there's only one step left for him to fully become a super being. As Paul looks confused, his mom says the final step is for him to drink the poisonous water of life to open his mind and see into the future. A while later, Stilgar tells Paul that he must start learning to navigate the desert alone. Paul looks ready for this, but Stilgar tells him to be careful because there are dangerous creatures in the sand. While Paul then begins his walk in the desert, Chani follows and teaches him how to move around. As she also shows him other useful things that can help him, Paul looks happy and falls in love with her. Elsewhere, Jessica communicates with Aaliyah and tells her that they need to start getting more people to believe in Paul. As she looks at some Freemans who are scared of her, she then says she'll have to start with the weaker ones. A while later, an Harkonnen ship lands in the middle of the desert to secretly attack the Freemans. 
However, the Freemans are already aware, so they ambush the Harkonnen soldiers. Paul also helps in the fight and impresses everyone when he saves Chani from being killed. After the battle, Stilgar praises him, and Chani also asks where he learned to fight so well. Paul then mentions that he learned it from his father and other people from the House Atreides, who have now been killed by the Emperor. He also says that he and the Freemans can work together to fight the Emperor, as he then suggests going further north to slowly reach the Emperor's territory in Arakeen, Stilgar supports him. The next day, while Stilgar rides a desert worm, Paul admires the view and asks Chani if he'll ever get to ride one too. However, Chani says only the Freemans can ride it, as they keep talking and admiring the view of the desert. Paul and Chani eventually give in to their love for each other, which makes them kiss. In the days that follow, the Freemans continue to take down the Harkonnens whenever they show up in the desert. One night, Paul has a nightmare where he sees himself following a strange lady to the south to trigger a holy war that leaves millions of people starving to death. The next day, Stilgar tells Paul that he'll have to take on his final test to become a Freeman. As he says that Paul will have to ride a worm, Stilgar mentions that the Chosen One doesn't need to prove anything to anyone, so he can just keep things simple. Just then, Paul walks into the desert and calls on a worm to come out. As a very big worm starts approaching, Stilgar, Chani, and the other Freemans are shocked because they didn't expect a big worm to come out. Despite this, Paul still takes on the worm and successfully rides it. Everyone is excited by this, and Stilgar even looks impressed because another prophecy has been fulfilled. Meanwhile, someone informs Jessica of what Paul did, and she uses this to prove to some Freemans that the prophecies are real. With this, she tells them to spread the word about Paul. Shortly after, Jessica talks to Alia again and tells her that they need to leave for the south since most people in the north now believe in Paul. The next day, she sets out to leave and tells Paul to follow her, but he says he prefers to stay in the north to fight for the Freemans. As he also starts to doubt the prophecy, Jessica says that Aaliyah thinks he's blinded by love. However, she tells him to reserve his hand because there'll still be a strategic alliance he'll need to make in the future. As she then leaves, she tells him that she'll be waiting for him in the south. After she walks away, Paul then realizes that Jessica is the strange woman in his nightmares. A while later, the Freemans continue to destroy Harkonnen's strongholds, so Raban gets angry and decides to attack them and kill whoever their hidden prophet is. As he takes his men to fight, the Freemans are too strong for them, and he manages to escape before he's killed. Elsewhere, the Emperor asks his daughter, Irulan, about the rumors of the Freeman prophet. Since she says it will be a bad idea to kill the prophet because his people will only grow on belief, Irulan suggests letting the war between the Framans and Harkonnens happen. She then mentions that when it happens, he can then interfere and end it as a savior. The Emperor praises his daughter for her input, and a Bene Gesseri sister named Margot also says that Irulan has been learning well with the Bene Gesserit. After they leave the Emperor, Irulan continues to talk about the Prophet, and she also asks if there's a possibility that Paul didn't die when his people were wiped out. Margot immediately tells her to avoid thinking of something like that. She also says that if Paul is alive, then he'd likely come for revenge against the Emperor. As Irulan then asks if there's an alternative to Paul as Lysen al Gaib, Margot mentions that the Ben Gesserit are already looking at Fade Rautha, who is the nephew of the Harkonnen leader Baron. Irulan doesn't like this idea because Fade Rautha is psychotic. But Margot says the only thing that matters is if he can be controlled. The next day, Margot attends Fade Routha's coming of age ceremony and watches him fight three men. While he easily kills two of the men who are drunk, he realizes that the last person is okay. He then struggles in the fight with the man, though he eventually wins. After the battle, Fade Routha complains to Baron for making him fight someone who wasn't drunk. Baron then says he wanted to test Fade Routha. He also mentions that he wants to gift his nephew the land of Arrakis because Raban has failed to stop the Freemans. As Fade Routha looks shocked, Baron tells him that if he succeeds in finishing off the Fremens, he'll make his nephew emperor. After Fade Routha leaves the room, he notices that he's being followed by Margot. However, as he confronts her, she seduces him and he falls for it. 
Later on, Margot informs a reverend mother named Moheim that Fade Rautha has vulnerabilities that make him controllable. Moheim then mentions that if Fade Rautha succeeds on Arrakis, they'll find the best way to control him. Elsewhere, Baron names Fade Rautha as the governor of Arrakis and tells him to get rid of the Freemans. Meanwhile, a group of smugglers led by a man named Gurney enter Freeman territory, but before they go too far, Paul and the other Freemans attack them. Luckily, Paul recognizes Gurney as a man who used to work for House Atridis, so he stops the Freemans from hurting the smugglers. Gurney then looks happy to see that Paul is alive, as he also sees that Paul is the rumored prophet that everyone has been talking about, Gurney praises him and says that a lot of people already fear him. After a while, he also starts encouraging Paul to take his fight to the south, since he has an army of people who believe in him. Paul says he can't go south because he has seen visions showing that if he goes there, a lot of people will die. Gurney then says that he'll eventually have to go because a war is coming. He also tells Paul about the atomic weapons his father kept hidden for House Atreides. Later that night, Paul tells Chani about it, but she doesn't seem to trust Gurney. Paul then says that Gurney is like family to him, so Chani says she'll convince Stilgar to check out the weapons store. The next day, Gurney takes them to the weapons stash, and he tells Paul that with the explosives, he can take on true power. Elsewhere, Jessica visits a sacred temple and gets one of the devotees to extract the water of life from a desert worm. After this happens, she then mentions that a man will soon arrive to request for the water. The devotee says it's forbidden because no man is allowed to drink it, but Jessica tells her to let the man try. Meanwhile, Paul starts seeing visions of something bad happening to Chani. When he wakes up, he then sees that the Harkonnen has destroyed a part of the Freeman territory. Later on, after the Harkonnens leave, Paul and Chani go over to check the extent of damage. They then see that many people died while others, including Stilgar, got injured. As Stilgar complains that the Harkonnens used bombs instead of fighting on the ground, he gets a message that the War Council in the South has called for all leaders to show up. Stilgar tells Paul to go, but he says he can't go south. After he leaves, he tries to use his visions to decide what he'll do next, but he only hears a voice telling him that he needs to drink from the water of life to be able to see the future. A while later, Chani eventually comes over to inform him that the Freemans have decided to move everyone to the south before the Harkonnens return to finish them off. Paul says he'll wait behind because he doesn't want to lose her, but she says there's no way he'll lose her. He then agrees to cross the desert with them, though he says there's something he must do when he gets there. Shortly after, they all leave the north, and Paul heads to the sacred temple Jessica went to. There, he is given the water of life to drink, but he's also warned that he might die. As Paul drinks it, he suddenly goes unconscious and connects with the spirits of his ancestors. He also sees Aaliyah, who says he needs to learn the truth about their family. After a while, Jessica returns to the temple and tells her followers to find Chani and the others to let them know what has happened. Chani then arrives at the temple and sees that Paul is dead. However, Jessica says he's not dead and that his vitals are just low. She also mentions that only Chani can bring him back because the prophecy says that the Lysin al Gaib will be brought back with desert spring tears. Stiegler is also there, and he realizes that the prophecy is about to come to pass because Chani's other name means Desert Spring. Following this, Chani shed a tear and mixes it with the water of life, after which she put it on his lips. Just then, Paul wakes up and everyone bows to him. However, Chani is not happy because she still believes the prophecy is not real. After a while, Paul tells Jessica that he can now see the future. He also mentions that in all the possible futures he saw, there's only one where the Harkonnens won't prevail. As Jessica then looks curious, Paul says he saw his mother's bloodline and found out that her father is barren. She says she also knew about it after drinking the water of life, and Paul then says that they'll have to be Harkonnens to survive. Just before Paul meets with all the Freemans, Chani tries to convince everyone that the prophecy is just a way to get them enslaved, but no one listens to her. Shortly after, as Paul arrives to attend the council meeting, he's told that he needs to kill Stilgar to have a spot on the council officially. Stilgar also agrees to let Paul kill him, but he says he won't be stupid enough to kill one of their best men. Following this, he proclaims himself the Lisan al Gaib and says he'll lead the Freemans to a better future. They all then bow to him, but Chani looks disappointed. Days later, the Emperor receives a message from the Fremens, saying that the Lisan al Gaib is coming for his throne. He 
doesn't look happy with this, but as Irulan reads the message, she goes to meet Moheim. As she mentions that Paul is alive and coming for her father's throne, Moheim says the Emperor is destined to lose his throne. However, she adds that there's only one way Irulan can retain power for her family. Elsewhere, Paul comes up with a plan to take the fight to the Emperor. Meanwhile, Baron, Raban, and Fade Rautha are summoned to Arakeen by the Emperor, who is disappointed that they don't know who the Lisan Al Ghaib is. As the Emperor then gets one of his men to knock down Baron, the Harkonnen leader looks helpless as he battles for his life. After a while, Paul and the Freemans reach Arakeen on their desert worms. They also fight the Emperor's men and kill anyone in their way. The Harkonnen ships then start escaping, but Gurney catches up with Raban and kills him. Not long after, Paul breaks into the Emperor's castle and goes straight to kill Baron, as he calls him his grandfather. He then confronts the Emperor for killing his father. Paul also tells him to surrender and give him Irulan's hand in marriage. Chani looks shocked by this, but she says nothing. However, the Emperor says he killed Paul's father because he was a weak man. As he also mentions that Paul should be bowing to him, the Lisan Al Ghaib tells him to either stand or pick a fighter. The Emperor then picks Fade Rautha, who says he's honored to fight for the throne. As he and Paul then start fighting, Fade Rautha gets the upper hand and stabs him. Just as he's about to finish him off, Paul takes control and kills Fade Rautha instead. As Paul approaches the Emperor after this, Irulan tells him that she's ready to marry him. Paul then tells the Emperor to kiss his ring and bow before him so he can be recognized as the new Emperor. After the Emperor kneels, everyone except Chani also kneels before Paul and Irulan. As Paul then looks at Chani, she walks away angrily. Shortly after, Gurney tells Paul that the other great houses have refused to acknowledge his ascension to the throne. Stilgar also asks what Paul will do, and the new Emperor says he'll lead them to paradise. Meanwhile, Jessica communicates with Aaliyah and tells her that her brother is about to attack the great houses and begin the Holy War. While the Freemans then get ready for war, Chani leaves and summons a desert worm so she can leave Arakeen. 